Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. The French American Cultural Foundation, led by Constance Milstein, is delighted to partner with NYU DC, which is the first NYU campus aside from the New York City campus. And obviously, they're focusing on politics and the humanities and history, which is perfect partner for our topic today. The French American Cultural Foundation partners with programs that promote the French American relationship. So onward, we are going to present this panel of talent who have helped create Un Village Francais, which is an extraordinary seven year series that focuses on a critical time in world history, which many today are not aware of or perhaps even forgotten. To lead the panel is Dr. Sidney Boyd, who is an editor at the Federation of State Humanities Council and a lecturer at NYU DC. Dr. Boyd. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here this afternoon in conversation with this fascinating panel of artists. A very brief introduction to them and then we'll get underway. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Emmanuel Dossé who is a TV series producer, creator, and CEO of Tetra Media Fiction, part of the Tetra Media Studio ITF group. He co-created Un Village Francais and also co-created and headed the series department in the Paris, Paris Film School, La Fumée, from 2013 to 2019. Next to him, I'm very delighted to welcome Marie Cudet, an actress who is in the process of making her first short film, Peru, which circulated in many festivals. She is also developing her first feature film as well as a series co-written with Frédéric Kirbin, who I'll introduce next, while continuing her acting career. And zooming in with us from France, Frédéric Kirbin is creator and writer who is joining today's program remotely. He is one of the creators for the series featured today in Village Francais. Welcome, welcome. Hi. I'd like to open this conversation with thinking about the title of this, which in watching the first season struck me as mysteriously simple for such a complex emotional story about one village's survival of Germany's occupation during World War II. As writers particularly, how did you think about the title in relationship to the story that unfolds over these seven seasons? Um, we had a long discussion with uh, with uh, Frederic and Krivin on the whole uh, writing room concerning the title uh, Un Village Francais, which was a working title, and in the end it became the title of the series. Always difficult to find the right title for a series. Um, when we were thinking about this show, is we wanted to do um, a very French show so that maybe one day uh, viewers from all over, all over the world could watch it because we, we thought at that time, and I think it's, it's even more true with the streamers, that um, it's what is very local and very specific of a culture that can interest other, other viewers. And uh, Un Village Francais had this uh, very simple idea. It's even a, a, a title that, uh, English uh, viewers, American viewers can, can understand. You don't even need to translate it. And <coughs> behind this uh, real simple title, there is uh, also a complex uh, study of uh, human beings during, during all time. There is a book, I wouldn't say it's famous, but uh, it inspired us at that time. It's called uh, Une Jeunesse Française, a French youth concerning, it's about uh, François Mitterrand, which is a former uh, French president. And um, he was during occupation, he was both a collaborator from 1940 to 1942, and then become a resistance. So he had this very ambiguous uh, path of life, uh, which is typical of what happened during this uh, period and typical of the show we wanted to make. Another show saying, oh, look, this is a bad guy, this is a good guy, but in the gray area saying, if you live through this time, everything is much more difficult and complex than it seems to the few, a few, uh, 
few years later. Yes, you know, uh, thinking of gray areas, Maria, I think of your character. Uh, I think she's faced with very many great gray areas. It, it's um, one of the ways the show really uncovers um, the ways that our humanity is challenged. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how did you research this role? And are, are there histories that you brought in with you from, from your experience? Uh, it's like, um, so I'm sorry for my English, Emmanuel will help me sometimes, but it's like um, there is a, a different part of that. Uh, at the beginning, I can, I can, I can say that each people in, in France or in Belgium, or we have all a, an, an history with the, is the big history. Like I was, um, there, are, there was a lot of stories in my head about my grandfather, about my grandmother, and I, for example, just one example, but my grandfather lose, lose, lost, lost. lost his mother in, mm. in uh, dans des bombardements, comme tu dis. In the bombings. In, uh, the, the, in Brussels? Yeah, yeah, in Brussels, because he was studying uh, lo, the law, and uh, the, it, it was underground, the, the, the university was underground. Mm. And one day he said to, to his mother, oh, I really dream about chocolate. And she was a piano teacher, and, and he, he, he just living with her, the father is far away and she go out and she died because she she go to to take chocolate for his son that's for her son that's crazy so we have all the story with war and maybe we are the last generation to 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 have that inside of us and it's really important that show for me it's really important to never forget that my my child as not the same story because my grandfather is like behind me, you know, and it's a it's a way to to never forget what happened. And uh, it, it was uh, um, for my imagination that was I I I I je portais ça. I don't know uh, my character port has that inside. I was holding. But after the, there is also. Uh, just I I'm an actress, so I I read um, I read text and I play, and it's just like that. And I play with presence, and I don't want to have so much weight of his stories on my shoulder when I'm playing. No, I when I'm playing, I'm full in love with German. I'm I'm people continue to live the presence, even if it's really difficult. Like it's a Imagine we have a, the virus, it's the, the worst and worst and worst, mm -hmm. but we continue to fall in love. And when you play in a, in a, uh, in a, in a movie and it's a story movie, historic movie, you need to, you really need to know that. You, you need to play in present. It's my way to work. Mm. It was particularly important in, in Un Village Francais is for everyday life uh, for French, for French in this small village during the occupation. And it was very important for the characters not to know what will, will yeah. happen and forget what was history. In the first episodes, the Germans arrive in the first episodes. And second episodes, they are still there and, and they will be there for a maybe, time. maybe a thousand years. Yeah, and you don't know, know and you don't want to know. Uh, and that was very important for the characters to, to play and, and in the present. In fact, it's always like that. When you, when you are an actor, you, you, you play the present. Mm. But when it's a historic movie, it's some call, it's more important mm -hmm. than that. The phrase that um, stood out to me in the first season, especially, the war is over. And I, you know, mm. we as viewers know it, that it's not. Um, but for them, for the characters in that moment, it is. I, I learned from uh, Jean-Pierre Azema, who is a, a, a very important historian uh, of this period and uh, was the mm -hmm. uh, historical um, uh, consultant. 
historical consultant on the, on, on the show, was working very closely with Frederick Crivin. Uh, I learned from him that at that time, it was a really, really precise questions that were separated people between people's thinking in 1940, the war has ended, and people who said, no, the war didn't end, it mm -hmm. hasn't ended yet. This, this is a huge difference between people thinking this is this is the end and, and people thinking no this is just the beginning mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's that's is that is uh, um, what separates people the, just this way of thinking mm, so fascinating you know of course um i am a teacher <laughs> so uh watching this show too i think um you know, I am totally enraptured with this. This is what I want my students to watch because they will absorb this history. But I wonder if, if, um, and this can be for Frederick or any of you, if you think when you're creating the show also of education or is it just capturing a moment of history, are there other things that you're thinking about in terms of its impact? I can answer. <laughs> Well, uh, our job uh, as a series creators is to entertain, mainly to entertain. I mean, our first job is to entertain. Uh, you hear me, yes? Are you hearing me correctly? Uh, no. No, you don't uh, hear me. <clears throat> can, can you hear? Yeah, it's okay, fine. It's okay? I'm sorry. So our job as uh, series creators is to entertain at first. Uh, I mean, uh, education, uh, we, are not, we are not teachers. We respect deeply from time to time the teachers, but uh, we are not teachers, we are uh, entertainers. Uh, but when you do an historical show, uh, you have uh, an extra responsibility because uh, several people will uh, discover uh, the, the period you're talking about, they, they will discover, they will have a picture of that only with your show because they won't have time, especially in the United States, but uh, elsewhere in the world, they won't have time to investigate how, how was actually uh, German occupation in France. Uh, so you can't escape completely to your responsibility when you do that kind of show uh, because you know that millions of people will have a picture, the only picture in their life about German occupation will be uh, with your show. Uh, that's why uh, it's always the case when you do a TV show, to my opinion, but uh, you, in an his historical show, you really have to, to, to have a strong uh, research uh, on the beginning. Uh, for Un Village Francais, it took, uh, it took us uh, 18 months uh, before uh, starting the writing. That's incredible. Um... This is jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, you piqued my interest now because I know that there's a, another work in progress on the Civil War. Um, can you talk a little bit about that project in relationship to what you just said? Uh, <clears throat> at one point when the French show was uh, on, on its end, uh, some people uh, ask us what could we sell to the Americans? Uh, our first reaction was you don't sell rice to the Chinese or spaghetti to the Italians and you don't, say, you don't sell TV shows to the Americans. They do, uh, that's the contrary, you know. Uh, but um, actually uh, the Russian question is uh, so burning in the United States and may be difficult to be uh, uh, told by America, we, we, can, we can figure it. it's a possibility that it's difficult for American uh, writers to, to talk about it directly, I would say. So uh, we, with Emmanuel, we, we did notice that the civil war was lasting more or less the same length than uh, German occupation, five years. Uh, we had the same uh, situation of families uh, completely divided uh, by the war and by the, the ideology, uh, the ideology uh, around the war. Uh, and uh, we began to think, could we adapt uh, the, the concept of a village français to the civil war? Of course, with American writers and directors. And we did propose this idea to director Brian De Palma, 
who, uh, who amazingly, on the first step, were, who, who found it uh, very interesting and who did accept to, to direct the pilot if it so uh, uh, would ever uh, be created. So uh, for two years now, we are working on that and uh, digging in the civil war history and uh, the history of TV shows about civil war because uh, there were at least five uh, important TV shows for 30 years about uh, the civil war. Uh, but uh, there, there were uh, honorable probably, but uh, that they were not enough <laughs> Um, politically, uh, let's say, tough and accurate uh, to, to avoid, uh, to, to create a new show. There is a need of a new show about the civil war in the United States. Uh, uh, we hope it will, uh, we, we will do it, but uh, uh, no, uh, it's important. Yeah, uh, with, 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 uh, with this show, uh, French Village. Are there um, cross-cultural reactions that you didn't expect that you got from it? Cross what? Cross-cultural um, cross cross reactions. Yeah, what is cross-cultural? Uh, uh, people from other culture reacting in a special um, way about the show. Uh, many uh, many uh, countries have a problem of a past uh, dictatorship or or of the threat of a dictatorship. Uh, I, I, I think I remember a very big democracy, an old democracy uh, not far from where you are, who, well, had this, the smell of a possible dictatorship uh, very recently. Uh, <coughs> maybe it was a, a part of the, of the, the audience of Avillage Francais on, the, on the American networks, uh, by the way. Uh, so several people were, uh, we had reactions of people uh, uh, who were concerned, like the Spanish who had the civil war just before World War II, or with the, uh, the Italians who, 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 had the fascist, who had the fascism and also a kind of civil war at the end of World War II. But uh, people like uh, in South Korea, where the show was very uh, popular, or in Brazil, uh, uh, we had, uh, we, we seemed to have uh, touched the heart of many viewers around the world. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the threat of dictatorship is uh, universal. Mm -hmm. the, the memory or the threat is universal. Mm -hmm. So what should I do if tomorrow I can't uh, read the newspapers and my neighbor is arrested because he's a Jew or Tutsi or whatever? What, what should I do? What would I do? Apparently, it's a universal question. And it's a present question. That's mm. called, it's, it's history, but we talk about the present. And, uh, and that, that's, that's really interesting to see that emotions pass through the, the, pre, to, through the story, through the age. <laughs> That's really, really interesting when you, when you play that because, yes, with humans, it's always the same emotion. Mm. What and, and it was really, really <coughs> important in French in the, 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 in, during the work with uh, during the French village to, 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 be, the, to be the audience like that. The, and to, we are not heroes or we are not bad people. That there is not that there is just normal people. I, I can talk about my character, but I can all, all I, I see the other characters that, that was like that. I was just a teacher and, and just an, a normal people. And then the audience can can ask to them when when they see the show, okay. What can what what will I do if I was her? You know what's and that was really really important. Never to be like we are not more smart or not a hero or not no just okay that's happening. It's the teacher and it's the the I don't know what, how do you say le menuisier and the the, the maire. <laughs> yeah, you capture that so quickly, I mean, in the very first, I don't know, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna 
recap, uh, we, we first meet your character yeah. on a field trip with children in a field. Yeah. And it just seems, it just seems so normal and very relatable. Yes, it's for me, it's in a foreign language, but I, I've been there, I know that. And then all of a sudden this German plane comes and, and your character's reaction to that is so visceral that I think it speaks of the show as a whole. It captures, yes, this is a human emotion. This is not just isolated in one place in one country. This yeah. is something we all feel yeah. together. And that, that was explained Frederica. It's, it's mm. that normally uh, feature film do that. You 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 talk about something in your that you, you need really well, but after you can see that feelings are universal. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it's a good show, normally it's like that. So I hope it's a good, if you say that, maybe it's a good show, I don't know. Very good. I'm, I'm wondering now too, you know, what are the rewards and challenges as a writer, producer, creator, bringing this story, this history to life? How do you, what do you focus on? What are you thinking of? Are you thinking of these visceral moments uh, very strategically? Um, it's uh, depending uh, which part of uh, me as a producer. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's a particular point of view. It's a long story. Mm -hmm. You know it's going to be a long story if it works. If it, if if the first season works in the audience and you have the chance to have a second season, mm -hmm. you know it will be a long occupation. Mm -hmm. And so. And this is a project, the artistic project is to do from 1940 to 1944, maybe 1945. We did until 1945 in the end. So, you know, and you know, this is a project, this is an artistic project, this is also a human project. Mm. How you're going to work for, in the end, we produced yeah. this show for 10 years. Yeah. So, how you're going to work every day to have a good show that that uh, is uh, earning money. Not, if you start losing money during this show, you won't do many seasons. And uh, with a, a kind of a, a kind of family, artistic family that is gathered around. Mm -hmm. And that is very important. The way you do the show is the way it looks on the screen. Yeah. And four years, we had this chance, I'm not the best, person to talk about it because I can uh, talk about it here of, if you want after. <laughs> and so what was really important in the show was it was it's, it's called un village français. So what was really important is the cantine. Mm. And, yeah. Uh, and and that and, was great. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's not uh, it's very really, really important the way you eat on the on the yeah. uh, on the set. Uh, we had this uh, brilliant uh, chef. Uh, yeah. You 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 eat at the table the serve you the the, the 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 when you're eating an american um, an american movie on the set you it's not you're not seated on the table mm -hmm. on the, with someone bringing you your fresh dish that was cooked today yeah that, that was really 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 i can talk about that because it, it was like really a family mm -hmm. and that's it's in the hands of the producer to make a good family to, to... yes, I, I'm, I'm completely sure about that. If you have a good um, man, a keep, comment to do? A good crew. A good crew in each place, you have a good movie. Mm -hmm. And yes, that, that was so, so important. The, the, the moment, sometimes it was winter, snowing, it was, quite difficult you know like that and if we can eat together and and that the, there was one cook and he's a great man we <laughs> take like french uh, uh, french uh, things uh, around the france and and we have sometimes uh, we we share wine or <laughs> we don't know it's it like it was like a little village in fact and mm. and each time we were happy to to meet us again uh, in in the if when you read the script and you are happy to 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 go back into the characters and to the crew, you know, and, and that was great. And the, at the heart of the production, this is what matters most: is the artistic project, the the scripts 
are obviously very important. And every every season, uh, Frédéric Crivin uh, was talking to uh, Jean-Pierre Azema, deciding uh, what are we going to tell mm -hmm. historically in this season, what is important in 1942. That, that is what they want to say about this period, what are the characters will live through this period. And that's also a new challenge for an artistic project. Mm. Every season we had to solve and to think differently, which is very important because you don't want to feel, the audience don't want, and, and, the, and the crew don't want to feel that they are repeating themselves, always doing the same thing. Oh, you have to think about, continuing the process of creating, but changing every year. This is very important for me as a producer that people feel like they belong to uh, something that is that matters a lot, uh, the artistic project, but it's mm -hmm. bigger than the whole crew. Uh, this is a way you can uh, work for years with a, a happy family that is participating to this big project. It's such a special way to sustain energy to tell those kind of difficult history. Um, but you're absolutely right. When we tell a history, we have to, we cannot tell all of it. Um, looking back over the seven seasons, I know that every decision you made was very, very careful, but are there, <coughs> are there moments that you, you might go back and bring out that you didn't looking back on it? The moments that we regret uh not regret but if you could bring it in if you had space and time thinking oh you know this this part of the history i would love to have told that <laughs> that story as well um uh, yeah i have some 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 <laughs> some passage or <laughs> there, there, is a, there is one episode with frederick that we and and, and it concerns uh, the yeah. characters of lucien that I, like I, i'm regrets. not sure for this <laughs> 47 episodes uh, I don't remember the, the, the episode where uh, Lucien is uh, having uh, sexual intercourse with uh, oh, no, mais, oh, ça va. <laughs> her, her lover, her, her, her German lover, who is completely burned like a, a, a too much cooked uh, hamburger. And I cannot <laughs> speak anymore. And that, that was so difficult to, to, to play with someone who can, cannot speak. You know? he, he always said just, mm, mm, mm. I was like, ah. <laughs> so this, we, we, we usually, we usually yeah, they, we, with Frederick, we were uh, during editing, we, we, we knew if we were doing a really good episode or a good episode on, on this. On, on this particular episode, we we had to admit, okay, <laughs> <That's a good laughs> we one. failed it. <laughs> uh, it's normal, you know. So much episode, <laughs> yeah. nothing can be just perfect. Yeah. But one thing important, I think, also for, for me, we never know how the how how that will continue. You know, mm. we we dis we discover year after year what will be the story mm. and they, the they didn't know when they, they they didn't know when when they would die yeah what and i never die uh, lucien never <laughs> died I'm the only uh, one i never die you know? <laughs> lucien was supposed was supposed to be killed in the bombing uh, somewhere somewhere in uh, 43 but uh, i dislike that eventually so she was the the last uh, character to survive eventually yeah, every everyone and, else, it's like heroes and die and I. And the heroes. first, the first episodes, uh, Lucien is out in this uh, in this trip with uh, our, a teacher, and mm -hmm. there's kind of beginning of a love affair, mm -hmm. and uh, and this character uh, gets to die in the first episodes, and that was a way for us saying to the audience, look, it's that like could that. happen to every everyone. Yeah. I remember really well that could, because the, the character could, could have stayed. Could yeah, have, could have and I re, I remember Bruno like that. Is, uh, yes, the name of the character. Strange. And that was a way of saying. And and there are seasons where suddenly your favorite character gets to die. Yeah, mm. it's like in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> in the first episode, you lose the, the king. <laughs> yes, but I think Game of Thrones, like this show, captures uh, our attention because we aren't used to people pulling our beloved characters away from us. But mm. of course, this is history, this is true. Yeah, that's true. So um, 
it's life in fact it's yeah. so cool. did you run i'm curious did you run into any uh marketing problems as you killed off characters when, uh, we, when we did kill characters if, if did we have marketing problems when killing killing characters no we had to kill characters because uh, even if we are not teachers uh, we needed people to understand that uh, when you begin to resist in 1940, statistically, you're dead in 44. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no matter, uh, we, we were, uh, we had uh, big, big bonds with our characters. We, we, we are not especially sadist, uh, but uh, we have to, we had to kill them because uh, at the end of the show, people have to understand that most of the early uh, undergrounders were killed. I think statistically, you told me that it's only 15% of the resistance from the 1940 that survived yes, the but, war. But the, the, the resistance of 1940 were very, very, very few. Probably, uh, I don't know, less than 300 so in the whole uh, country. So going back to thinking about sustaining your energy for this project, there's so little hope in the story you're telling, as you're, as you're pointing out, it's very, what you're telling is true and it's a difficult truth yeah was that hard too for you to hold that for a decade um you asked me or to, to either, either. To, to yeah. Or three yeah yeah it's not about hope to be really honest when we finished shooting the last episodes i was really relieved mm. because i knew that um I'm a big uh, fan of TV series, and I know that uh, if the viewers, the audience, loved the series for years, in the end, they won't really like you when you end the series. Mm -hmm. And if you fail, the, the, if, if obviously the last episodes are not very good, the audience will really, really hate you and maybe say in the end, the TV series were not that good. So I was really stressed all the time. And I had time to think it because I knew the Germans were going, uh, were in the end going to leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was stressed about that. So I, I remember the last, when we, we finished shooting, uh, I was very, uh, it was a very emotional time, but I was also very relieved to think, okay, Me we too. did it. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. But my, my, if I understand your question, um, for me, th there was hope every time, everywhere mm. during the show. So, because we don't know what will happen, mm. then there is a little hope when you meet someone. Me, I suddenly fall in love with a woman. Mm. It's so strange, but it's because of me. But uh, uh, and and that was a little hope. Or you have a baby, or you have. A, a, a little moment then in fact is full of hope mm -hmm. it's it's like this period we are all afraid of the big virus and uh, to take a plane it's just like a nightmare mm -hmm. but we have hope because we take a coffee together and you can imagine that the future and it's like that but me too i was relieved when i left Lucien back to me because it, it was not easy to have, to 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 porter, I don't know to porter, to to have Lucien in me uh, uh, so long. Mm. Lucien, it's not me, but she was always with me during mm. ten years. It's like in in my daily life, you know. And suddenly say, okay, bye, Lucien. It's so strange, but sometimes I I think about her. Mm. I, I tell that to Frederic one day because. My son was doing something. I was under the rain in Paris with my son on my bicycle. And, and uh, I, I need to find something to, to, to protect my son from the rain. And there is something in this show that there is uh, always um, what's it's, it's, it's an expression, you know, uh, it's a rapport à Berio, you know, system B. It's a because Barrio, the director, find always a way <laughs> to, to do something in a in a best way. There's always a solution. Yeah, there is always with that character, and mm -hmm. it's the system B, you know. And I say to my son, I don't know why, 
okay, it's a system B, you know, no, I, 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 I protect you because of the system B. I was like, what? It's inside of me. <laughs> and I, I call uh, for like just two days after the, the end of the show. Mm -hmm. It's inside of my way to think. And that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, about hope, I, I think uh, in uh, Frederick's writing, we're writing, there is lots of words. Uh, lots of humanity yeah so even if in, in desperate hope. situation in, uh, yeah. in in very tense situation there's always a kind of humor kind of humanity that helps you uh, save the day mm. at least or save the episode yeah and see the life dif differently but also the present because mm. you can look at the, the love story of Barry and Lucien it's so strange mm. and that's not an historic love story you, you can leave that now. No? Then... So, Luciani, if you are taking her with you into these new projects, um, are yeah. there specific aspects, you know, with what you're working on now that you have learned from her that you will never let go? Yeah. yeah. During 10 years, yeah. you, 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 you have a character during 10 years. I was like a Yes, and I'll say at the beginning, I last what I, when I was a baby, a <laughs> big baby or girl. And now I'm quite a woman, not not completely, but <laughs> I want to wait, you know. Yes, that's I growing up with a project and with a character. That's just it's an experience yeah. for a comment, an actress. Yeah. Um and and for you, what are you what have you taken from this project and then also moved forward with? Um, when I started uh, working on, on Un Village Francais, I, I, I knew I produced one show. And uh, uh, so I think during, uh, during, during this process, I became a, pro a producer mm -hmm. uh, during, during Un Village Francais. I remember thinking after the fifth or sixth season, okay, now you can there's always, for everybody, you have always this kind of feeling that uh, are, are you a uh, is it, is it painter? Does it exist? Yeah. Mm. Are, you, uh, are you really up to what you're doing? And uh, <laughs> it, 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 um, I learned my, my job on uh, on Villa Francais. So now I, I believe I can produce TV series now. And I produced a few of them since then. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. That's brilliant. Um, for those who are tuning in, uh, we'll be opening it up to Q&A very soon. So if you'd like to put some questions into the Q&A, we'd be happy to start answering those. Um, there are so many reasons to keep this history in the forefront of our public minds. Um, and we are also, you know, coming out of a pandemic, still in the midst of a pandemic, are there other ways that you see this history staying relevant and meaningful? I don't understand. Frederick, you want to answer uh -huh. this question? Uh, I didn't get the, the question uh, completely properly. Qu'est-ce qui fait que cette histoire du village français reste encore d'actualité aujourd'hui? Est-ce qu'il y a des choses qui rendent compte qu'elle est encore d'actualité aujourd'hui? Well, as I... As I uh, Ma uh, voisine. As I told you, uh, the, the threat of dictatorship is uh, always, uh, or, I mean, it's not always the same uh, at the same level uh, all the time, but uh, what happened, for example, in the United States uh, last uh, uh, December uh, is an example of some, something shanky, shaking uh, in a democracy and uh, uh, when the uh, village français began to, to be broadcast in the United States, it was uh, the moment where some parents and kids were separated by the police at the Mexican border, uh, for example. I mean, and uh, I, it's not me who, who find a parallel between the two situations. It was uh, spotted by other people. Uh, I think, again, uh, the democracy is may, may be strong, uh, but it's also fragile. It's also, uh, it's not uh, lasting forever if you don't fight for it. So uh, I think that's, that's uh, what makes uh, to the program something uh, universal and, and modern is 
<coughs> that you can live in a country in which you think the freedom is guaranteed and uh, with uh, uh, one uh, political guy like in our country, Eric Zemmour, uh, or uh, other guys or girls, but it's mo most of the time it's guys, uh, you think that maybe the, the reduction, the, the, the shrinking of the democracy can happen very uh, brutally and uh, in an unexpected way. So uh, seeing people in 1940 uh, uh, having to deal with the disappearance of freedom, of uh, what we thought were the basic freedom, uh, uh, it concerns everyone actually. It may concern yeah. everyone actually. Uh, thank you. Uh, I see a question here in the Q&A that I think directly relates to that. Uh, Q&A, it's the, the, the uh, question. question. The people it's the in, okay. uh, Robert asks, each character responds to the occupation with their own psychological weaknesses. And those weaknesses show up and increase with the increased stresses of the occupation. Did you know how these characters were going to respond to the occupation from the beginning, or did their response to the stress just evolve during the writing? Uh, so that the question of the writing, the, the long distance writing, uh, in a show, you, 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 you can conceive, you can imagine what you want, but you have the actress, uh, the flesh of the actress and the actors, and it's what the actors give who will, uh, built actually the character. I mean, it's a, it's a, a trip uh, between the character, actor, character, actor. So uh, on the first season, you write what you want. <laughs> you don't know most of the time who will, uh, who will act all these things. And then you see the rushes, uh, which are very important because you see how the, the actors and actresses who, who will actually uh, make these uh, characters live? You you see how they, they do that with their with their uh, their, their their own uh, character uh, and uh, the reaction of the character is is uh, completely influenced uh, uh, by that. I mean the the, the meeting between uh, the character and the actor. That's uh, that the main point. Uh, what do you have? Uh, what do you want to to? Uh, what do you think uh, will be the best with this actor or this actress uh, uh, for 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 the show? Uh, how do you feel it? And uh, the rushes are the main uh, are the main uh, thing for that. Seeing day day after day the rushes. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you really have a response from the actor or the actress, and uh, you imagine the what, what, what's uh, what's next. It's how you imagine really what's next. Uh, there's another question here about deciding when to end it, when to end the show. Um, <laughs> the Germans uh, did help us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, specifically, she, uh, Stephanie mentioned it was very interesting in the end to see what happened to the characters. Lucienne was one, how the experience changed her, the Nazi officer was another. Um, how did you decide to stop? It seems like it could have continued forever. <laughs> no, uh, honestly, a good show, uh, uh, to my opinion, begins with a big breaking point. The breaking point was the German arrive. The Germans mm -hmm. arrive and uh, one day they, they just leave and the show is over. I mean, we decided to, man, to make a special extra season about the memory because we, we, we did consider that in an historical show, the question of the memory, how the memory is built by characters, by political uh, people and so on uh, was a big topic. So we decided to, to make this uh, seventh season, but uh, the Germans are gone and the series uh, is gone. I think it's very important to know what you are doing when you're doing the show. So, so you have a chance to end it up clearly. Um, if the audience are not doing the, the season, you shouldn't do you shouldn't mm. be doing. Yeah. Uh, somebody else is curious, how do people in France react to the show? 
compared to Americans? And have you seen any differences? We don't really know how the American audience reacted. The show in France was really popular uh -huh. at the beginning, uh, but it was broadcasted on kind of a, a NBC in a way, or, or, C, or, or ABC. That's, and so it's, uh, it was on the uh, France Television, uh -huh. which is really popular audience. And the show in a way is not that easy to watch. Uh -huh. It's um, more complex than the traditional cop shows and everything. So the audience has always been good, but not incredibly good because it's more like we were like, it's not really uh, a f a free TV, not cable TV, it's right in between. This is a place where strangely, F Frederick, Mary and I are, are happy to be, to, mm. be, to be, but it's not, a, it's not the easy, easiest place to be. Uh. Our, our viewing habits have changed so much because of streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. Does that change, you know, how you're thinking about future projects, the way that people consume it and the time that they spend um, with streaming platforms? Well, uh, sorry. It, it doesn't change that much for, I think, all three of us, because mm -hmm. it's the way we've been thinking TV for, for years. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were very, personally, I was very influenced and that's by HBO shows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't pretend I, I ever produced a, a, an HBO show, but um, I think this is the tendency for all the streamers is doing uh, shows with real showrunners, real writers, where the power is at the, for the creators and not for the producers or the uh, or the commissioners. I think the streamers means today what the streamers need is content mm -hmm. uh, and creativity, and more than ever, uh, creativity is at the heart of our of our of our job, and this is what we've been trying to do for years. So. Personally, I'm pretty happy with the, with the streamer's era. But for me, the, the, I, I completely agree with Emmanuel, but for me, the, the place for a village français on the, I don't know the name in English, but it's for the, the service public. It's a public, public service. service. It was a, a good place. It's a public service channel, no? Mm -hmm. And then it's for everyone. Because, and even if it's not easy to watch, like a cup uh, of stories, etc., etc., it's more easier for uh, like that, uh, for, for what uh, I mean, the, uh, the audience. Yeah. But for me, it was the, the, the right place for a village from mm -hmm. a French village. And even if maybe imagine you, you do that again uh, today, it's, it's the right place for me. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a question here. I think you have when we started this conversation, you talked about a little bit, but um, somebody asks, were any of the stories based on historical incidents that you were familiar with? So I think a little bit more plot based in the narrative. Did anything happen that you knew personally had happened? What? Could I? Uh well, uh, the research uh, was, uh, I mean, the research was making interviews with uh, at least uh, 100 uh, of witnesses. Uh, so I did that. Uh, there are most of them, the, uh, most of these people died, of course, uh, now, because these interviews were made, uh, these, these interviews were made uh, around 2005, 2006. Uh, so, there are several uh, small stories, I, I mean, story, some plots, some subplots or plots of Un Village Francais or just events in one episode uh, uh, did happen in real life. Uh, exactly like that, or sometimes not exactly like that. Uh, uh, sometimes we just, we did adapt situations. For example, the Exodus, uh, we didn't have the, the means to produce a real Exodus on the streets with uh, dozens of vehicles and the Stukas uh, uh, firing at uh, poor civilians. So uh, we, we did the thing with the church. 
because uh, having a kind of exodus in the church uh, that, that we could produce. Uh, another example would be, uh, uh, there, there were several uh, places in which parents and kids were separated, Jewish parents and kids were separated by the Germans. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there were also several places in which uh, re Jewish refugees were stuck in a, in a school for, uh, but we, 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 did, we did both at the same time in season four. Uh, so uh, we very often we did, I was inspired by uh, uh, real uh, situations uh, controlled mm -hmm. by uh, historian Jean-Pierre Azema. And uh, then uh, we put the fiction on this because it's a fiction. I mean, it's a fiction with the ambition of uh, edutaining, but uh, it's a fiction and sometimes uh, the fiction wins. Uh, we try not to, uh, I mean, we have a, the responsibility I was talking about uh, previously. So uh, we won't make a kind of full fiction on, on a very important politically, on politically very important uh, subject but uh, it's, it's still a fiction. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, when uh, Lucien is bringing the kids uh, into the first episode because it creates this situation where kids are killed and so on. But in 1940, in France at least, no one would have only uh, uh, nothing uh, to do with the war. No, no teacher would, would have only the idea to put uh, kids outside the school to do that kind of stuff. That's completely anachrony. Uh, it probably began in France at the end of the, of the 60s. Uh, but we decided that it was very interesting uh, because uh, uh, the guiltiness uh, for Lucien, uh, the situation is very interesting. And uh, uh, so we, we did that kind of thing with our, with, uh, our historical consultant uh, who was a, uh, Severe, severe, how do you say that? Strict, strict. Strict, who was as strict as a rabbi, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, we, we, did, we did bargain uh, with him sometimes. <laughs> Some, sometimes he said, uh, uh, no, Fred, that's, not, that's really not possible. So, uh, okay, but if uh, there, were, there were several negotiations with the consultant. Huh. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Um, somebody else here asks, is there a reason Raymond Schwartz's final outcome is left unclear? And I think, <laughs> why, why, yeah. Pourquoi est-ce que, pourquoi est-ce que finalement, c'est pas très clair ce qui, la, la conclusion uh, de Raymond de Schwartz, pour Raymond, ouais. Oh. Well, uh... It's uh, that's life. That's the life of a show. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, we decided uh, we we didn't want to be that clear at the end of his uh, when he was on stage, uh, but he's he's alive. Obviously, he's alive because uh, Daniel Larcher has a, a note from him, uh, so he's he's alive. In the seventies, in the seventies, Daniel Larcher just before dying gets a note from a. From Raymond, so from Raymond Schwartz. We we know Raymond will always get out of any situation. <laughs> I'm pretty happy yeah. with it. Nice. So for us, it was like kind of a it I don't know a pied uh, ultimate ultimate joke about the car. Ah, it's ambiguous. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. Um, He's so French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Someone else asks: Did the creator and writer? face pressure in advance or criticism afterwards from any sources in social, political, or economic power in France regarding oh. the way that the various sides, um, collaboration, resistance, persecution were portrayed. Actually, uh, the little, the, well, at first, uh, all the political personnel who, who had an action, who had a role in World War II, when we did the show, they were either dead or not uh, in charge anymore. That's why it was possible to make this show because ten years, ten years earlier, it couldn't it couldn't uh, have been it would have been possible. 
Um, uh, so the reactions were, around? sorry. Oh, the, re uh, the, the reactions, the tough reactions were not about uh, showing collaborationists, it was about how we, we did show the undergrounders. So until uh, the end of 1943, mo most of the press and historians uh, were unanimous to say the show was, uh, was great. But when we, when we picture the French, the liberation of France, uh, we, we began to, had, to, to have a bitter uh, comments that we were showing uh, French underground too tough. Uh, I mean, we, uh, our vision were, was supposed to be too tough, uh, not enough patriotic, I would say. Uh, and uh, we were very happy because when you have, when, when you are a creator, unanimity is not your friend. Mm. <laughs> no, <c 'est> <laughs> unanimity doesn't, it's not good. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody else asks, did anything you experienced in acting in or producing the series um, change your own thinking? For example, the issue of native French French anti-Semitism, as expressed by some French citizens. I, I didn't understand the end of the question with anti-Semitism. Um, was there an impact of the show? Uh, did, did we have, uh, did we have uh, emotional reactions or something like that with, with the show and the, uh, the, the politics like anti-Semitism? I think that's the question. Yeah, especially if I think about anti-Semitism in France. Uh, I don't think the show had uh, any influence on uh, philo, philo semitism or anti-Semitism. I don't think so. Uh, and I don't think it's important the memory duty, we say in French, to devoir de mémoire. It may be important, but we already know that people just don't think, don't remember. Human being doesn't remember because if he was uh, remembering everything, he would probably commit suicide very quickly. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't think viewing, uh, seeing a village français will prevent uh, anything. It's interesting to to dig and to and to repeat and to show to people how uh, things were, what happened, how people. Uh, uh, like Daniel Larcher, who is a good guy, or uh, others who are less good guys, how uh, these people who are not monsters, how uh, they were involved in monstrous things. Mm -hmm. It may help people uh, who, who ask themselves questions to, to realize sometimes they are involved in that kind of process, even a very, very small, even in private life. Uh, but I don't think a show like this will prevent uh, people who don't like Jews uh, <laughs> won't like them more because they will have seen a village français. I don't think so. Um, we've talked about how it's been received in America and in France. Somebody also wants to know how it's been received in Germany. Oh, Do you have so any questions? <laughs> this really, we don't know. It was it, it was uh, aired in Germany, which wasn't um, wasn't uh, obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Sony, who is a uh, 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 um, pay TV. That, uh, pay TV channel, yeah. Pay TV channel, heard it. And they, uh, I, I, we don't really know <coughs> how it was uh, received. Probably the show wasn't that popular anyway, because. Uh, I they, think the, uh, the Germans are a little bored with uh, yeah. World War II. That's so uh, much. That, like many Americans with the Civil War, by the way, but, uh, I mean, uh, it's not fresh meat uh, for the Germans, uh, World War II, I mean. And the Civil War too, you're finding that in this, this project? Uh, the, the latest show about Civil War was Mercy Street on uh, PBS. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not very well received. Uh, but I'm not sure it was really because of, uh, of the subject. Uh, uh, I think the Washington Post said uh, uh, Mercy Street lacks more than a British accent uh, because it was after, uh, after the big uh, English show, uh, uh, 
le, comment c'est le, la série anglaise, euh, la grande série anglaise euh, oui. de Saga. Euh, bon, it was to, 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 to. Oui, Downtown Abbey. It was after Downtown Abbey. PBS wanted to, to give to American audience a, a purely American show, though, so there was Mercy Street. Mm -hmm. uh, the trouble of uh, Civil War, Civil War show, TV show, is it was always uh, focused on uh, the blue and the gray. Uh, it was the name of one of these, uh, North and South. Uh, it was another one. <laughs> Uh, are, I mean, the, oh, today the, the question is not uh, the blue and the gray, it's black and white. It's the black and the white. Uh, <clears throat> so in, in the, the difference uh, between the German occupation in France today and uh, the civil war in America today, it, it has nothing to do because the racial question in the United States is really burning right yeah. now as we speak. I mean. Uh, you still have problems. Uh, you just want to to destroy a, a statue uh, of uh, General Lee, and uh, you have demonstrations and, and so on. Uh, there is an enormous uh, uh, enigma uh, because when you see, for example, the movie uh, Lincoln by uh, Steven Spielberg, in which Daniel Day Lewis is absolutely wonderful, like always. But when you see this movie uh, and you see the end, uh, the war is over. The North, have, uh, the North have, uh, has uh, won the war. Slavery is abolished. Uh, that's wonderful. I mean, uh, apparently uh, there is no problem. Or uh, uh, and uh, you, you will uh, Americans will have to wait for hundred years to get the civil uh, rights. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's an it's a kind of enigma because you 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 uh, there is a kind of amnesia. I, it may uh, seem very pretentious for French to to tell that, but now uh, I, I don't think the word is too heavy. Uh, uh, the civil war began in 1865, and uh, and uh, you people did wait, did have to wait 80 years to get an historical book more or less accurate about slavery. 80 years in a, in a country like America. I'm not uh, saying it's not okay, it's just how it was. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Gone with the Wind is a marvelous film in terms of uh, cinema. It's really a marvelous film. I mean, it's, it's, but it's also a propaganda masterpiece. Uh, real propaganda like, uh, I don't know, Leni Riefenstahl in, uh, in Germany. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it gives a completely, but not a little, completely uh, uh, false image of what was slavery. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it is interesting uh, to see that Mercy Street, this show of PBS, uh, which was in the air, I think, three years ago, you don't have one main black character. It's mm -hmm. incredible. In, uh, so uh, I'm sure people who did this show were professionals, uh, that's sure, but that means uh, there is a problem. So now with Black Lives Matter, things will change. There was the Underground uh, Railroad, uh, for example, and, uh, and some other things. But I mean, uh, there is still an enormous uh, kind of, it's not completely an amnesia because the smallest battlefield is an object of devotion by Americans. So there is not a complete amnesia about civil war. Civil war is everywhere, but there is an enormous emptiness which a show could uh, contribute to fill. Yes, I think, um, I think many people would agree that we are still in a very divided country and the way that we preserve and tell history um, the responsibility you're taking on with a project like this, for example, it's a happy one, um, especially given what has come before and what we hope, you know, we'll move into the future. It's, it's a lot. I mean, I think the, just, uh, the reason why we're, we're trying to do shows and work on culture 
Mm -hmm. So for a long time, German occupation divided our country, mm -hmm. uh, divided the families, and uh, being able to talk about it, being like you go to the shrink, <laughs> and you 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 manage to talk about it, and it, it gets better. Mm -hmm. It's not being able to talk about it that is a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Americans are uh, deeply divided about what the word freedom means. Uh, freedom may be uh, the just people walking where they want to go, but freedom is also the freedom of, of having slaves. I mean, uh, the freedom, uh, the cessation uh, happened because people uh, in the name of freedom, uh, the both sides uh, were, were uh, there, there was this war for freedom, the freedom of the slaves or the freedom for of uh, be, being able to hold slaves. And uh, this point, which is in the constitution, this ambiguity, which is uh, from the beginning in the history of the United States, is still very, very strong today. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the beginning of the constitution said more or less that every human being has the right to pursue, uh, I don't remember the name, the, the word exactly, but uh, happiness and uh, the, the, the happiness of his family, but the constitution uh, lives with slavery. So mm -hmm. this ambiguity uh, uh, created all the enormous crises that American history did uh, know, but it is still unsolved today. Yes, and it's uncomfortable to show people that, to uh, take something that has been such a, a grounding principle that we all grow up with, and then to show that truth. <laughs> that, that's why. Yeah, it's difficult, but that's it. It may be we, we'll see uh, within, let's say, five years. But it may be uh, less difficult for uh, non-American uh, people to 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 produce uh, because uh, it's so uh, burning, it's so hot uh, that uh, even, for example, the creators of uh, Game of uh, Thrones, who, mm -hmm. who 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 are probably. Uh, uh, one of the most powerful uh, writers and producers these days. They wanted to make a Ukraine uh, called the Confederate uh, happening today. Uh, the idea was the South won the Civil War, and now uh, the, the, the Confederation is still, uh, there is still slavery in half of the United States. Mm -hmm. I think, to, to my opinion, it was a completely dumb idea, but that's not the point. Uh, uh, they, they did announce, they, they made a statement, an announcement about this project, and in, uh, uh, in one week, it was burned by, uh, by, by the, the politics, I mean, immediately. In France, we could do that, I think, because... Uh, yeah, oh. Mm -hmm. oh. No, 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 I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's a very, uh, That's really, very, very interesting uh, situation. Uh, if we, if we may tell uh, the the story of the civil war with the same uh, apparently slow rhythm that we have in a village français, meaning uh, leaving the characters to move very slowly and sometimes without rea realizing it uh, from a political opinion to another. For example, it would be very interesting to show uh, all the people in the in the frontier states uh, who did support Lincoln because they thought he was the best uh, asset to 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 keep slavery. For example, mm -hmm. thing which is completely uh, unknown, uh, I think, including in American audience. Yeah, what what interest? Huh? What what for me? It, it's interesting. It's Oh, the writer like Frédéric Rivine or oh, Emmanuel Dossé, or oh, different creators, um, parvienne, comment tu dis parvienne? Can manage. Can manage to, to, to put some ideas on the ground mm -hmm. in the writing, and it's not expected, and the, the audience can feel that. Mm -hmm. But no, it, what interest, it, it interesting it's uh, all art, or cinema, movie, TV show can talk about politics. Mm. And, and sometimes the country doesn't um, 
I cannot speak in English anymore, but sometimes the country has not made the um, le chemin avec leur histoire. I don't know. Like when we talk about Germany, I think Germany was in the obligation to be in front of his own history, mm -hmm. you know? And they do that. They really do that, I think. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 didn't, they need to do that to the end, mm -hmm. you know, because it was so incredible and so, but they do that. <coughs> and with some in France, we, we don't do maybe the same, uh, the same duty with, for example, uh, Algeria, Algeria. With our colony, with yeah. our colony, it's yeah. a very yeah something and that we don't look straight. Yeah, forward. and mm -hmm. with the Belgium story, it's the same. We don't do that with the the, the colony of uh, African colony, and then we are not able to talk about mm -hmm. the, the story. But in a show like that, with uh, you can do that and that, and maybe. It, it can be possible uh, because of the, the, the movie, you know, and it's the role of artist, it's the role of writer, it's the role of, how can we face to that? Mm. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot speak in English anymore. <laughs> That's what you've just said is profound. And as we near the end of this webinar, um, I just, I'm, I'm wondering if we can think together, you know, um, what you've created here, by telling the slow story of the everyday lives yeah. of people. It's stories that we recognize, that we empathize with, and then also we yeah. see these truths. Um, are there particular aspects for each one of you that you want to make sure that we don't forget, that we take with us from this series? Oh, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. You want to answer? Uh, something that I think I, I liked uh, in, in this series is that I felt very close to most of the characters and still they resist. Still there's mm. something that is more complex, that is more, and I think the, in, in this mm. ambiguity between very, very close, very familiar, and still looking into the myster, mystery of a human, of human beings. I think this, is, this was something that, um, that I, I really love about this show. Mm. Uh, this is this is humanity. Yeah, me too. In fact, I, I, you, you always need to question. You always need to, to ask to yourself. Okay, it's not so easy. In fact, it, we don't have, don't you, you, you don't. Please don't have a, an answer. Just, please don't. No, you always need to be in question. I think it's that's important, and yeah, yeah, and you use emotion to to mm. to make understand that. But yeah, that that was not easy, in fact. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I, um, yeah. yeah, and 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 life, it's not easy. Mm. Even simple things, yeah, like yeah, you, you can take uh, the, the the education of children mm. when we have some ideas when you don't have children. And suddenly you have children, <laughs> and not one, two, three. But and it's really not easy to to, and it's not like what you think before. And it's mm -hmm. always like that. And that is in the in that show. Mm -hmm. And you need to question always. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like people to remember that a human being is a kaleidoscope, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, Maybe think about the, the, some, the final sentence of a collaborationist uh, during his trial. He said, in crisis situations, is, what is difficult is not to do your duty, is, is to understand, it is to understand what it is. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the viewers for these questions. We didn't get to all of them, but there are many. Thank you uh, to all of our panelists for this wonderful conversation and we'll continue to think and ask questions.